the Internet of Things is a really big concept and the future of life, I believe. See, we have deployed millions of smartphones and we've invested billions or trillions of dollars in technology. But we have yet to even begin to instrument the physical world. That's what the Internet of Things is. We will take very small sensors or microcontrollers or computers and small wireless communications devices. They will be as small as a grain of rice. And we will put them in or on or near the physical objects or artifacts, the things in our lives that matter to us. Now, you may have heard a lot about smart appliances or smart homes that are built on that concept of putting a small chip, controller, communications, sensor in an appliance and having access to it from anywhere in the world. This market, this opportunity, this requirement is enormous because we will be building or tearing down barriers or bridges between the analog world where we live as carbon beings and the digital and silicon world in ways that we have not even conceived of yet. Most of the technology we've deployed has been in and around information technology with balance sheets and income statements and bills of lading and invoices, rows and columns. And with mobile, it's all around the smartphone. You're there. You're operating it. You're making it happen. With the Internet of Things, we won't see them, we won't think about them, but they will be everywhere. And I think it's a really important thing for us to think really hard about why we would connect anything, what we would connect, who we would give access to that connection. There are the smartest people in the world participating talking about what this thing might be, investing in what this thing might be. And what bothers me a little bit is that all of that brilliance, most of that brilliance is focused on money and focused on technology. And I'm trying to focus on the money and the technology, of course, because that's how I make my living. And I'm trying to focus on meaning. Because if we are going to instrument the physical world, we better be damn sure we know what we're doing. The unintended consequences of social and mobile and IT have been well documented by people far smarter than me. And the implications of deploying unmanned aerial or ground or subsurface vehicles have only begun to be documented. I'm not afraid, and you shouldn't be either, because we've just begun to instrument and we have not yet begun to define. And while leadership in Silicon Valley and Manhattan will have a lot to do and in Mumbai, and in all over the world, but I'm here in the States, you will have an opportunity to participate in the definition of what this thing is and what it is not. And I'm hoping that I've interested you. And I'm hoping that you might start today to rethink what this thing might be. And as you start to ask how you can participate, start with the word and. We have camps today focused on money or meaning, capitalists or social entrepreneurs bloodthirsty traders or socialists. The labels don't fit, the labels don't work. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be slave to the labels. I wanna focus on and. I want you to focus on and. I want you to focus on the possibility of deploying the Internet of Things as a tool in population health. How about for the elderly? Sure, IoT can enable this robotic seal pup as companion to an elderly person. Yes, it can do that. And it can also be deployed in healthcare services the same way we deploy technology in retail. You, you deploy technology in retail so that you can take associates and have them face customers. See, we can deploy the seal pup and we can deploy technologies that are time-saving for healthcare service workers so that they can start to face patients more. Think about food. Yes, we are and can deploy the Internet of Things so that we can enhance yield and productivity in big ag, the much aligned big ag and we can conceive of very small scale implementations that have massive productivity, massive yield, massive profitability implications for small farmers. And we can deploy and are today along the lines of convenience. This machine here can scrape the MAC address on your smartphone and know essentially who owns that phone, take a picture of your face, and start to make recommendations about snack foods or drinks that you might or might not want based on just being in the presence of that machine. And we can also address grand challenges, such as the Chancellor mentioned. Groundwater. 
We have 12 million wells in the United States owned by private individuals, and almost none of them are instrumented. Meaning, we have 20,000 wells that are instrumented by the USGS, and that's it. We don't know how much water we have. We don't know where the water is. So we can deploy the Internet of Things for all of these conveniences and all of these efficiencies in our built world, in our built environment, in our built economy, and we can use them to instrument the things that drive the grand challenges. And I'd like you to think about this with us. I'd like you to think about the concept of replacing words like or or versus with word and. What if we could have our cake and eat it too? What if productivity and profitability didn't have to come with cost reduction rooted in reductions in force or higher unemployment or lower levels of employment or engagement or meaning in that work? I'm not going to read through all of these, but you get my point. What if we pursued and when we talked about the future of life as we thought about the Internet of Things? I want to share with you a couple of examples of how people are working on this today. This first project is one that we're involved in, in the south coast of Massachusetts, through the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth and the town of New Bedford and Fall River, where I grew up. Not one of the centers of tech. Now, grand challenge, transportation, infrastructure. Now, this one isn't an advanced economy. It's driven by money. $150 billion a year we spend on surface transportation infrastructure repair. None of it's instrumented. Well, we have a concept. What if we instrumented these roads for things like humidity and temperature? And then we could understand if there's water underneath the pavement and if it freezes, there's a frost heave and that could drive all kinds of bad things for the road, for the haulers, for the inventory on those trucks. And what if we did it in such a way that we conceived of all the people, all the institutions that could benefit from that instrumentation and we made it available to all of them? Instead of conceiving of this as a one-to-one -one or two-party buyer-seller relationship, we're conceiving of these assets as community-based assets because there are dozens of stakeholders who have interests in roads and bridges and tunnels, and it's not just the haulers and the heavy shippers, it's the people who live in the coastline, that six-mile band, three miles onshore, three miles off, who are susceptible to an enormous amount of pain and life of loss and life of property with changes in storms. If we know those bridges are safe, we will roll a bus over it. We can't know enough about that bridge from satellites. Now we can go to another part of the world. And you can think that I'm being a little bit cheap here, but I'm not because it's real. Water matters. There's a company in Europe that gets this too because they drill the wells that drive the water. They sell the pumps that push the water. And they rolled out an, inter an Internet of Things solution so that they could know remotely where the pumps are, are the pumps running, are they pushing water, is it clean? And here's another trick. I'll call it a trick because it doesn't sound normal for a for-profit business. They ask the question, who else could benefit from this data, from this intelligence, from this information? Now, imagine the pressure in profit and loss, and imagine the geopolitical pressure because wars and genocide can be triggered or extended with water or lack of it. They thought about people. They thought about how the average family in their areas of operation burned eight hours per day to find water that was potable. They created an SMS application through smartphones, sorry, flip phones, simple, ratty, old flip phones using the lowest of wireless networks. And they created a free service so that moms and elderly and little kids and anybody who needed to walk eight hours a day for water, they took that average time to water to under four hours. This is about time, this is about life, this is about people, this is about meaning that goes far beyond money. Yes, profit is meaningful, and there's meaning in profit, but there's profit in meaning too. And so I'm going to leave you with a couple of tools that might help you participate in the definition of what this thing is, because the Internet of Things is not just about technology, it's not just about the Internet, it's not just about finance, and it's not just about the centers of tech and finance on the planet Earth. It's not about the top 100 cities. It's about you and me deciding what we want our future of life on this planet to look like as we share it with more machines. So start with seven questions. What do I want to instrument? What physical asset? What data do I want off of this? Who owns it? Who gets access to it? Who determines those access rights? 
What's the minimum communication method? How much do we need to disclose to be transparent? And finally, what happens when someone violates a rule? Don't just go into that good night and start connecting things and start subscribing to services. This isn't like social or mobile. This isn't like freemium. This is the real world. Start with those seven questions. Try to focus on three maxims that are going to sound a little bit cute, but the more you say them to yourself, the more they're going to mean something to you. People above machines. Faces before screens. These matter. They matter a ton. And finally, grand challenges ahead of small conveniences. And then I think you will find the path, I think we will find the path for and. We will make meaning for ourselves and our family and others, and we'll do it profitably. And the last one, one common goal. We all share this planet. I don't know any of you, but I can sense that this matters to you or else you would not have invested a Saturday. Remember, and. It's you and that company. You and this person. You and that institution. You have a role to play. I hope I've excited you about it, and I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you.